Good day, my friends. It's so good to see you again. I hope you haven't forgotten me. I'm Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor. And it's my mission to make sure your menopause is memorable in a positive way. And it's also to teach you how to make the rest of your life the best of your life. We have just finished a tiny unit called the Neglect Series. That was after I'd schooled you in two great big units on heart attack and osteoporosis. And today, we're ready to start another great big unit on Alzheimer's disease. If you haven't noticed, I cover everything in units. I have a huge syllabus for this education I'm giving you, and I'm years ahead of what you see published here on YouTube. There is always, always a reason that I present the material to you in a certain order. So what's happening here with these first three big disease units, heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's, is that I'm presenting the three most important diseases associated with menopause first. They are the three diseases that are directly due to estrogen loss at post menopause. You've already seen how critical it is to have this education in order to avoid heart attack and osteoporosis. And now you're going to discover just how critical it is to have this education in order to avoid Alzheimer's. If these three diseases are not your greatest concerns at menopause, it means you have your facts all wrong. So you definitely need to watch this and all the other Alzheimer's videos because doing so may be the very best way to avoid it. In my book, both the first edition and the second edition, all of chapter 33 is on Alzheimer's disease. However, you will get much more detail in these videos. You should use the book too because it gives you all the basic information. But these videos will go into great detail and include all sorts of demonstrations and perspectives that I could never, ever provide you in a book. So, everybody thinks of Alzheimer's as a horrible disease, and it most definitely is. But you have more of an ability to avoid it than you might imagine. But to do that, you have to learn a little bit about your brain itself. So as usual, this very first video in the unit will set the stage for all that comes after it. So let's start at the very beginning by talking about the basic building block of your brain. You know, I love to start with a quiz question because it makes you realize how little you know. So see if you can answer this quiz question. Which of the following is the basic building block of your brain? A, the axon, B, the dendrite, C, the gray matter, D, the glia, E, the neuron, F, the synapse, G, the soma, H, the white matter, I, the amyloid body, J, none of the above. Was that easy? Did you recognize those terms well enough to know each of their functions? Or were they only vaguely familiar? Do they all even belong to the brain? So now that I've got your brain percolating, I'll go ahead and reveal the answer. Here's the quiz question again with the answer in bold. So now you know that the basic building block of your brain is the neuron. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because everything else about Alzheimer's hinges on the neuron. First, I'll show you a picture of a neuron. It's important for you to have a mental picture of a neuron in your head, along with all the others that are already in your head. <laughs> I think a neuron looks like a stingray. You know that big, flat fish with a tail? Here are some photos of stingrays. See if you think they resemble a neuron. And here, I have a model of a neuron. Can you believe I found this on Amazon? 
<laughs> we'll use it to designate the different parts of a neuron. The biggest part of the neuron is this big fat region. It's the cell body. That makes sense. It's the main part of the neuron. Another name for the cell body is soma. You'll see both words to describe this largest part of a neuron. I'm going to be using the term cell body. The job of the cell body is to house the structures that the cell needs to stay alive. It's analogous to your own body. Your torso houses your heart and vital organs that keep you alive. So think of a neuron as an information transmission center. Its job is to receive and send information from one neuron to another. So, it has receiving structures and it has sending structures. Now, unlike a stingray, a neuron has more than one tail. <laughs> As you can see, a neuron actually has two different kinds of extensions from its cell body. The shorter, more numerous ones are called dendrites. Dendrites receive information. They're like your arms. Your arms are what you use to receive things like gifts. So just remember that you get things with your arms. The single long tail is called an axon and it sends information to other cells. So it's like your legs. They're longer than your arms and they can take you from one place to another. So just remember you go places with your legs. So the dendrites receive information and the axon sends information. And the cell body, dendrites, and axon are like your torso, arms, and legs. Too bad a neuron doesn't look like a human instead of a stingray. <laughs> now, in your brain, you have about 100 billion neurons. <gasps> but just having all these neurons isn't enough. What matters is the ability of these neurons to communicate with one another. Communication is a form of information transfer, and the way in which neurons communicate is the most important thing of all. So the dendrites and axons are just like your arms and legs. You get with your arms and you go with your legs. And the neuron gets information from its dendrites and makes it go to the next neuron with its axon. So when it comes to transferring information from one neuron to another, it's all about the connection between two neurons. Okay? When I attach these two neurons together, Notice that there is an empty space between them. And even though the neurons themselves are critical to the communication process, so is this empty space. You know, this reminds me of music. I'm a musician. I sing and I play the piano. And in both singing and playing any instrument, you learn that the moments of silence, the rests, are just as important as the sound. And sometimes the real magic occurs during the rest. It's that moment of suspension or lingering. Well, this empty space between the two neurons is called a synapse. And synapses are like rests. They're empty spaces. But they're only temporarily silent. The synapse is where the exchange of information occurs. So it's where the magic happens. And neurons have a special language. The transfer of information between neurons occurs via chemicals called neurotransmitters. So here's what happens. Neuron 1 has information to send to neuron 2. So neuron 1 secretes a neurotransmitter into the empty space called the synapse. And 
Neuron 2 picks up the neurotransmitter and takes it from neuron 1. So now you have that information going from neuron 1 to neuron 2. And the neurotransmitter contains that new information that is transmitted from neuron 1 to neuron 2. So the word neurotransmitter really makes sense. It's the information that is transmitted from one neuron to another. So all learning is a matter of transferring information from one neuron to another. And when there's transfer of information, we have what is called a synaptic connection between two neurons. And the more you learn, the more synaptic connections you have. And the more synaptic connections you have, the easier it is for you to learn. So you can think of synaptic connections as information pathways that form in your brain. And every time you form a new connection, you have added to the number of connections that you have. And once a connection is formed, you can use it again and again. That's what memory is, a pathway that is already there. So, if you use already existing old synaptic connections, you are merely sending a neurotransmitter into the empty space between two neurons that are already connected. This is what happens when you use your brain in familiar ways to do things that are not new or different for you. You are merely using the pathways that are already there. This includes things like working in a familiar job, doing a hobby that you love, doing anything that comes naturally to you, doing anything that's fairly easy for you, or multitasking. But if you create new synaptic connections between two neurons, that are not already connected. You have reached a whole new level. When you do that, you literally increase the number of your brain cells and make them transfer information to other brain cells. So if you use your brain in unfamiliar ways to do things that are new, different, and difficult, you are forming new synaptic connections. This includes things like starting a brand new job, learning a new language, learning to play an instrument, studying a subject that is very difficult for you, doing anything that does not come naturally for you, or doing anything that literally makes your head hurt. So you have old synaptic connections and new synaptic, synaptic connections. How many you have of each depends on how much you rely on what you already know or how much you learn new things. So there are three crucial steps that are involved with your neurons. There's the connecting of two neurons. There's the transferring information from one neuron to the next to form a pathway. And there's reusing old pathways again and again. Alzheimer's consists of three different processes that affect your synaptic connections. One, it impairs your ability to form new synaptic connections. So you aren't able to make this neuron connect with this neuron, can't form the new connection. And if the two neurons can't form a synaptic connection, they can't transfer this information across the empty synaptic space. And it impairs your ability to reuse the ones you already have. So everything that was there deteriorates. So the neuron is the basic building block of your brain. 
but it's really not basic at all. And in the upcoming videos, I'll teach you a lot more about how complex it is, but in an easy way, of course. <laughs> so here's a summary of what you've learned today. A neuron has dendrites-like arms to receive information and an axon-like legs to send information. It uses a neurotransmitter as the language for transmitting information by secreting it into the empty synaptic space between two neurons. And once you form an information pathway, you can use it again and again. But you can also make new connections between neurons. Alzheimer's, when your brain does not form new synaptic connections between neurons, does not transmit information between neurons that are already connected to one another, and does not reuse the pathways that are already there. And this will be the basis of what you learn in this unit on Alzheimer's. You know I'll address everything, the incidence, the symptoms, the risk factors, and every option you have for avoiding Alzheimer's. Just watch these videos in order and you'll form a lot of new synaptic connections. <laughs> so this is where I'll stop today. Next week we'll address your white matter and your gray matter because it's all a matter of gray and white. Go to menopausetaylor.me for consultations that will really create a lot of synaptic connections. <laughs> Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe right now, right now. Don't wait. Go ahead and do it now. And I will see you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>